going on, everybody? This is Cody, Max, Zach, and you're listening to the Talk It Off Podcast. I didn't do podcast. This is the first. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first intro with the uh, without you singing. I know, and it, I, bet, I bet it felt good. No, I kind of missed it. I'll bet really? it felt good for you. Oh, it felt so good for me. <laughs> no pressure, last minute to be like, oh, pull up Spotify. Look at look at all the songs. You, I felt like the last two times you did it, you were you were prepared. You like knew what you were doing, but yeah. there were sometimes we caught you off guard with it. Oh, yeah, were definitely. you nervous? Uh, to to do it every time. Yeah, I wasn't nervous. I was just more like, I don't want to do this. Was now. there a point where, where when we were like, now this is happening? Now we were like, damn it. <laughs> uh, actually, the first time it happened, I was like, this is not funny enough to continue. On <laughs> but then all the comments were like, oh, what is this this song. What's it gonna say this time? time? Yeah, which I liked. I like the I like seeing those. But yeah, dude, it's just too stressful to come up with it every time. Night Plus, play. I have Zach's fitness corner. I have my own Zach's thing. Zach's fitness corner. I it's forgot what it was. Zach. It's just Zach. Oh, oh yeah, you edited it, so you probably yeah. know. In his corner. corner. <laughs> Are we starting with the fitness corner? I, wait. Oh yeah. We should too. start with it, but I love the idea that there's that long of a pause. <laughs> it's just <laughs> Zach. In his corner. <laughs> it's silence, and it's you sitting in the corner. Yeah. yeah. Just, just fuming. <laughs> yeah. And the band's like. In his corner. <laughs> All waiting. Oh man. Oh, well, you might want to raise this a little bit, by the way. Oh shit! How is yeah. the how is the fitness in the corner going? Uh, Are you doing fitness in the corner? It's actually I left my corner. You uh, left your wow. corner. Yeah, I stopped going to the gym because Zach left his, his corner. corner. It's now just still just it's Zach. Zach. And, but there's no. But not in, in a corner. <laughs> I hate hate my gym. It's so fucking Why? bad. So you're out. Out of the LA fitness. The gym. I'm out of the gym, yeah. Like, why do you hate I the gym? I haven't gone back. Why, why do I hate why it? Do you hate the top it's... five reasons why you hate the gym. Number. <laughs> Welcome back to Watch Mojo. <laughs> We're counting down the top five reasons why Zach hates the gym. Hit number, the number five. Number five. Number five. Have you ever been walking through the gym and you notice that <laughs> nobody's wearing a mask? Oh. Uh, oh. Number four. <laughs> you got to hit the drop first. Number, number four. four. Uh, no, honestly, I really hate it because it. It's so unhygienic. Like I can't even describe to you how dirty is this. Gym. Are we still number five? This is or four. Is this number four. I said I want a top five reason. The whole thing is I said no, but seriously. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now that, that bit is yeah, done. The bit, the bit gets squashed there when I said no, but seriously. No, but seriously. That's the that's the it's safe to be word. Yes, and not but seriously. <laughs> uh, so it's unhygienic as hell. So bad. So basically, everything about the gym is like uh, uh, it's just like when you first walk in. Every, there's like it's like uh, paper. T- there's like a bin for people's like sweaty paper towels, which is like I get it. People are sweating. Bring yeah. a towel, but I mean, like an adult. They did, yeah. No, they did not bring the a paper towel. towel. Yeah, it's so gross. The paper so, towel. So it's like <laughs> Still it's a like towel. filling over the bin, like spilling over, and then like and uh, and then uh, you go upstairs and you go to use the treadmills, and the treadmills are all upstairs because it's in Los Angeles and everything. Everything's so compacted, so you have to go upstairs, and I and I start doing uh, going on the treadmills, but some of them are so broken like the uh fucking belt just slips out of nowhere so dangerous and i i have to do all these settings like put in my weight and how long i want to do it and the fucking elevation you know the yeah. speed i have to do that every time and so i'm i'm setting it up and then i'll start doing the run and then i'll just fucking slip on the fucking treadmill so i have to go to the next one and then i and then i bring all my stuff over to the next machine and then I I go to put my water bottle in there and there's stuff with fucking sweat napkins that are someone like just got done with Ew. it's like to the brim I'm like dude so then I'm like can't use this one so I have to go to another one I do I put in all the machines I'm like I'll put in all my numbers again I'm like here we go I'm gonna run slips again I'm it like, surprises dude. me the amount the sorry that, what's the, what's a better way to raise it surprises me how little effort That's people right. will put in. For just an extra tiny step to be mm-hmm. courteous to other people, I know. Like I we, clean the machine every time. Yeah, same. I I, I go to a, the gym that's at my place. They have like a really small gym here, and you you just got to be courteous there. Yeah. And um, but there's like we have a trash chute in our apartment complex, mm-hmm. and when you walk into the trash chute, you you bring the trash in there, and then you walk five more steps, and you open the trash chute, and you put it <laughs> in the trash chute. Right. There's people who walk in there like, I'm in here. Yeah. Someone else's problem now. Yeah. They just drop their trash in there, yeah. or like they'll buy a, a, a mattress, and the box will just remain. Yeah. There is, I'm sure there's like a like like someone who knows about like um, sociology or whatever could, could explain this to me, but there is something to be said for like if you see someone else breaking the rules, you're more likely to break the rules. So like, for example, uh, if I'm at the gym and I go take weights, 
and then I go to put them back in the place that the weights are supposed to be. Yeah. But all of the weights are out of order. I'm not going to I'm not gonna move the weights that someone no, already put no. there to put them back. And it's the same thing with that. Like, someone probably saw someone else not put the trash in the right thing, and they're like, oh, they did it, so I should do it. Yeah, like, it's definitely just, what's going on. Yeah. Just that, take the extra second. What I, are we, you doing? We have, like, like, fantasies of, like, creating, like, a, a video on an iPad that we can just afford to buy and just throw away, and we just have it on loop in that room. It goes, hey, asshole, yeah. finish the job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so I've stopped going to the gym, and now I just do running, like, outside. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and uh, it's actually way better. I burn way more calories. Uh, running, in, like, not on a treadmill is way harder. Have you gotten the runner's high yet? No, and then that's not real, so. Runner's high is real. No, it's not. It is a little real. Don't it's it real. All right, let, let me, but let me That's explain. That's what healthy people do. That's what, do what healthy people say. Like, get healthy, you'll get a runner's high. What do you think a runner's high is? Do you think you get, like, you start running, you go, like, <laughs> oh, you know, what? Like, you know, dude, where are the Cheetos? <laughs> <laughs> you run like a mile. You're like, oh, dude, do you know what's weird about the universe, actually? <laughs> <laughs> You're just floating. You're not even running anymore. It's like, yeah. Whoa. You know what I love? I just love being with nature. And it's this quick. Yeah. You're exhausted. Yeah. You're like, God, I can't wait to do this. Legs. Whoa. Oh, anyone got Captain Crunch? Yeah. Yeah. My, le- it's my legs are gone. It's just like the bottom of a genie. Yeah. <laughs> Looking like Casper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, the, the only way I can describe... If I had a runner's high, what it is is that after a certain amount of time when it's agonizing, eventually it's not agonizing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just your body is gets accustomed to it. It's not mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah. I don't know why people call it a high. I've had it, um, or what I assume it was after uh, a 2011 Warp Tour set that we did. So, uh, quick, we've talked about this like a thousand, like I've definitely on the podcast before. But we we're in a van with no AC. Yeah, we had no. Uh, uh, protection from the sun we didn't get water mm-hmm. we were eating taco bell every day it was like the hardest harshest of conditions exactly yeah. so we played this set and it was a, an especially hot day and i just remember afterwards finishing the set and being done with it mm-hmm. like sitting down and having this wave of like it felt like my body was like is that what pulsating. they're referring to i don't know because like but it I felt high there afterwards. is that fi- oh really yeah oh I, it was like a phys- physical feeling like that i thought you were getting to the point that there was this like gratification knowing you oh accomplished so you guys don't difficult. even fucking know you're like oh it definitely exists well i'm and you're saying like, there's, oh, there's, it does. A, there's a positive feeling your body releases good chemicals when you exercise okay. like the body. good feeling is like i'm getting through this and then hey i accomplished mm-hmm. this good go me yeah <laughs> i had this this thing for what a shitty high <laughs> never like can you imagine you, you smoke weed yeah, yeah. You just get so full of yourself. <laughs> oh, fucking awesome, dude. dude. Some people are. Dude, some, I love, there's like a meme online about two guys, like, it's like two guys smoking weed and they're like, no fucking doubt. When I get my Bugatti, man, you're <laughs> getting your Bugatti. Well, to be fair, they also, they also get high and then they go, you know what? We should start a podcast. Yeah. Right? <laughs> We're Absolutely. Funny, dude. Yeah, we got things to say. That's also a thing a drunk person would suggest. Oh, yeah. oh we got to start a podcast to get remember. Yeah. When was the first time we talked about starting this podcast? Oh, when we were did we, the, when we were did we the, drunk? Uh, no. No, we well, did the Q&A. Great. Oh, no, I, I, was, I had a drink. I think I had a drink, but it wasn't like, a, we should <laughs> get an apartment together. <laughs> <laughs> we're all moving in together. Yeah, dude, we're doing it. Let's go back to how it was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I do think that the podcast for us was... Uh, just born from that Q and A thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was organic. So, so yeah, it wasn't a, it wasn't an experience. I will yeah. say it is funny, and I've had this before when like I've been like, m- like mentally at a low point, and I'm like, God, I wish there was something that could fix it. And then there's always that person that's like, Have you tried exercising? Have you tried going outside? And you want to hate that person yeah. so bad, and then you exercise and you actually feel a little better, yeah. and you're like, Fuck, they were so yeah. right. I hate that they're right about Dude, this a little bit. Like, so true. Yeah. Like I, I went through the longest period during the COVID shutdown of not doing anything good for me. Yeah. Like I wouldn't walk outside. I was just like, I'm in. We're, we're doing <laughs> yeah. this inside. And then eventually I started doing the hike thing like every day. And I felt great after yeah. that. And then it's now I'm lifting weights and I'm feeling so much better. I, I, I would hate to know what I would feel like if I wasn't doing it again. Yeah, and it doesn't like, it doesn't fix everything. And I no, think the idea not, is not at all, but like, it sucks that it helps. Like I have, yeah. I have to go to the gym to yeah. feel better. <laughs> this is ridiculous. So. Yeah. I actually haven't really noticed that much of a, you know, like mood improvement. Really? From working out. Maybe I have, and I just, it's or really, so not gradual. even from like the satisfaction of like the progress you've made. Or just knowing like, you, that's gotta like, feel nice. Knowing oh, yeah, that you yeah, checked yeah, something true. off for the day, I think that's is true. what it is. That's true. It does yeah. feel. I do feel good about the progress. Yeah, and, like, everything. But like, I don't feel. Like, I'm not like sitting there being like, I'm happier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <gasps> oh, I'm happier. Yeah. I do like on days like if I go through a full week and I'm able to like hit all my goals on my watch. I'm like, yeah, that's yeah pretty cool. you know what? Yeah, it's cool that I was able to make time for that. Dude, exactly. so we have the that reminds me. Yesterday was um, 
our anniversary, me and Katie's anniversary. Congratulations. Dinner. Congrats. Thank you. Four years. It's incredible. Four years. Congrats. My longest relationship, and I've never been happier. That's awesome. That's great. How'd you meet? Uh, Katie and I met uh, a long time ago, but uh, we became friends probably in like 2000, like, I don't remember what year it was, but uh, she she would come to our shows in Chicago at... Um, the bottom lounge. Yeah, she had like, like a oh, pinball yes. machine. Yeah, and she worked at the pizza place, and she would always uh, bring pizza for all the bands. And we we're like, oh, cool. no way. Yeah, so then she uh, came backstage and would bring us pizza, and we we would all eat pizza together. And I remember the, one of the first times that she came, uh, and I was like, oh, cool, it's really nice to meet you. And she's like, yeah, you've met me multiple times. I'm like, oh, Jesus oh, Christ, called yeah. out. But then, yeah, and then uh, like we were friends for years, and then yeah, and then she came to another show, but. Uh, I mean, she kept coming to shows, but uh, what was I saying? I forgot. It was your, your anniversary. anniversary. Four, four, years. Years. four years. Four years. Four year anniversary. So we have a, 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 we have our Apple watches, and we close. We're trying to close our rings on them. All, you know. Yeah. So uh, there was a, at our at our dinner last night. There was a guy uh, serving us, and he had an Apple watch. And I wanted right when he was bringing it, put the food down. I wanted to go. You closing your rings? <laughs> <laughs> but there's no Try way. To look. Yeah, he would have been like. Can you shut the fuck up? <laughs> if he, or he just goes, no. And yeah, he walks yeah. away crying. Yeah. Dude, there's no way he didn't. They're, they're constantly on their feet. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're getting them steps in. Yeah. Dude, I, I, don't, I think I told you guys this. Or, I don't know if I did or not. Um, I went on a hike. like this. Like, it was a really cool hike with like a bunch of people for like the, the good cause. But there, I, I recognized somebody. And I was like, who, how do I know this person? And for a while to get myself back into working out again, I did a subscription to like the Apple Fitness Plus thing. And our favorite uh, instructor did a bunch of HIIT workouts. She had like an amazing personality. I think her name, I don't want to guess, mm-hmm. but, uh, but anyways, I was like, she looks just like her. And I'm like, I, I'm, I'm certain, but I was afraid to ask, because what if I'm wrong and I just look right, like an idiot? Right. Well, eventually I'm like, no, there's no other way. I know this is her. And I go up to her, I was like, do you do Apple Fitness Plus things? And she goes, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> No, she goes, yes, it was actually her. Oh, really? Yeah, like wow. the person that was like working me out with videos in my apartment ended up yeah. being on the same hike as me. Wow. That's the were, crazy were thing. Were they like so good at hiking? There was an no. awkward moment because then she goes, so are they. <laughs> There's two people with uh, her. Oh, no, that you didn't know? Well, because they did, they did cycling and dance, and uh, I didn't do either. Of those it's nice to know that they all hang out outside of I work. Know. You know? That's, That's good. Cool. Were they like really good at hiking? Oh, yeah. they, they it was a back, really easy doing back <laughs> hand spring. Like, yeah. come on, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that's what happened. Yeah. But no, they were they were uh, terrible at it. Mm. No, okay. Mm. No, it was very, yeah. very mild hike. Okay. But um yeah, I, I I excitedly met somebody yeah and then realized I was accidentally stepping on yeah. two other people. Uh. I found out so so uh growing up in Florida, for those of you that don't know, it's so flat. It's so it's flat. It's the flattest place. You have place. no idea how flat it is. Um, <clears throat> so hikes don't exist, really. Yeah. And I kept hearing when I, I came out here for the first couple of times, like, oh, you got to come on this hike with me. You got to do that. And when I think of hiking, I imagine, like, you've got, like, the stick that has to, like, get into the ground. You have a so backpack you climb. with the straw. Yeah, like, I imagine it's really intense, <laughs> yeah. but it's just a walk outside. Yep. It's a hike in Los Angeles. Some yep. of them some of them are kind of intense. Like, they the, Hollywood, the Hollywood yeah. sign hike is... Uh, Wisdom a, tree? Wisdom Steve. tree? There's Pretty different steep. grades, man. There's mm. I know a guy who, like, that's his favorite way to work out. He, like, conditions himself to go do very hard hikes. Yeah. And, like, there's, like, cool. there's an app called All Trails where you can, like, find ridiculous yeah. ones. But you're not wrong. The majority of the hikes that people, when they yeah. say, do you want to go on a hike? Mm-hmm. It's just, this is a, like, Running Canyon is a paved road. Yeah. yeah. It's just well, it's an inclined road. Yeah, yeah, like, but the one, the, the majority of people, I think, do. Yeah, yeah. If, I don't know the statistics, but it seems that way. Yeah. <laughs> you it's go also, there with a clipboard, you're like, which way did you take? <laughs> as they're exiting. Yeah. I've been trying to, like. <laughs> paved? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you look like a paved yeah. route. <laughs> I'm in hiking gear, super full of yeah, myself. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's like a granted, it's Los Angeles. There's a lot of creatives here. A lot of people not working nine to fives. But I will like go on a hike in the middle of the afternoon on a Tuesday, and I get upset when I see other people out there. I'm like, yeah. why are you all out here? Yeah, I need to. I understand that I'm also here, but go do a normal job so yeah. I can have the space to myself. It's crazy. Like it's always packed. It is con. I mean, there's a lot of people out here, right? But like, it's the same thing. I'm on the I'm on the road. I'm upset, and I'm part of the problem. Like, I don't have a, <laughs> I don't have a nine to five, yeah. dude. There is a, there is a way to go on Runyon that I like to go that no one takes. Oh, this is a pro tip for all but, of you Runyon people out so there. So do you know where Waddle, <laughs> there's a place called Waddles Dog Park? 
Uh, w a t t l e s. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Dude, it's change it immediately. <laughs> Waddles. It's like, it's like uh, outside of this house, and there's like a green hill. If you walk around it, there's like this area with like this tiny garden. You, you go up these stairs. Then all of a sudden, you're just at a mountain. Sounds you like you're telling me an Easter egg in a video game. <laughs> I know. And you go up the mountain, and then you go left, left, right, down, 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 down. Uh, then, you, then you climb this thing that no one else is on. But the only thing is that every time, without fail, because I have no service, I get anxious. So I was like, this is where I'll get murdered. Yeah. Yeah. It's super easy to get murdered on a hike. Yeah, you could. Dude, yeah. you guys are dark as fuck, man. <laughs> that's no, what, I was, I that's w- how my brain operates. This I went stupid. to a reservoir, right? Because it's like this nice little that's lake. That's where you get but that's murdered. What I'm saying. It's a beautiful lake. There's ducks and turtles. And the whole time, the word reservoir, I was like, this is it. I'm going to be yeah. on the news as yeah. a local on, man murdered in reservoir. They're going to bring you know? Forensic Files back for the third time. Just gonna be for the me. first episode. Dude, Dude Forensic Files, we've dum, never dum, talked dum, about dum, on this dum, show. Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> forensic scientists are so awesome, awesome. and super yeah. cool. Every episode of Forensic Files ends with it being like, and just to let you know, no, if you don't love forensic scientists, you're an asshole because they are life saviors and nothing is better than forensic science. These stupid idiot cops are useless yeah. without these They're tall scientists. and handsome, and you should give them a chance, Kathy. Yeah. They're really nice. <laughs> goom, 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 Kathy, goom, goom, goom. Kathy, please return my calls. <laughs> Dude, uh, so yeah, so for those of you who don't know, Forensic Files basically uh, it explains a. Uh, a murder mystery of some kind, and then it shows you how through forensic evidence they're able to solve the mystery. Mm-hmm. Um, and we really got into the show obsessed, obsessed when um, we were on tour with Crown the Empire. Yes, and it was freezing outside. I, we 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 were in another country. There was other things to do, but we found ourselves piling into this tiny little room with in everyone. the bus, <laughs> drinking mimosas. Yes, and I watching about the mimosas. like twenty episodes in a row. And I love the idea that people think like they imagine rock star life of people yeah. partying and carrying on. And it was just us huddled around being like, that guy totally did it. Yeah. He's definitely Mimosa, him. Mimosa forensic file party. <laughs> yeah. Dude, we I watched love- some of the most ridiculous episodes. Yeah. Well, that- we had nothing else to do. Mm-hmm. Like, do you remember the one where it was, um, it was the, this guy totally killed his wife. And he had to convince the police in his interrogation that he didn't kill his wife. Yeah. And she tripped, quote, I'm doing air quotes if you're not watching now on YouTube, which you're, you should. Um, doing air quotes because he s- said she tripped over her shoes on the stairs. Yeah. And then he went and did this whole dramatic reading of that. He goes, she tripped over the shoes. Yeah. It was the god damn shoes. Like, he did it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. There wasn't even forensic evidence. They were just like, that was a really bad performance. Yeah, this guy's guy. really overacting. It's just funny how it's like you can almost start every episode and be like, money, he did it. Yeah. yeah. Jealousy. Money. Insurance, he did it. Yeah. Money, he did it. Jealousy, she did it. Life insurance, he did, did it. it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a five second show. Yeah. He did it. It's like, that's why I love that Rick and Morty um, for interdimensional cable. They're really short mysteries. Yeah. It's like, I, w- I hope we can find out who did this crap. I did it. Here's <laughs> oh, okay. the murder weapon. Lock me away. <laughs> there was a couple, though. There was, uh, there was one episode in particular that, uh, that you turned me on to where there was a, uh, a woman who was saying that there was a doctor who was like doing really shady stuff. To the episode patients. is called Bad Blood. Go watch this. There is um there are so many I think some of my favorite memories that we've had have been watching movies or TV shows together on the bus. Yeah. And one of my favorite ones was we watched this movie Mama. And if you haven't seen it, it's a horror oh. film where uh there you fa- eventually you see Mama and we had all these jokes that we thought was that Mama was in the closet was Yeah. yeah. Mama well, was she, in there the was closet. a big big scare where yeah. Mama was in the closet. We wrote a whole song about Mama it. Mama in the closet. closet. Yeah. Mama, Mama in, in the, the closet. closet. You know what's interesting? That was really it. You know what's very interesting? <laughs> what? At first you like Mama. At first you like Mama. The thing is, this became a comfort <laughs> movie for us because uh, during during this tour, we had to, there was a, like just a lot going on. The tour bus broke down five different times. Dude, so we, we should were talk just about like, that story. Um, there was just, there was just exhausting for us, right? And we just needed something a constant in our life because we kept having to move in and out of these these buses every five seconds. We watched that movie, no joke. The 14, 15 times? We kept showing it to other people. Yeah. We had this incredible moment where uh, a friend of ours on the tour. From Brawlers. Yeah, from Brawlers. Yeah. Um, we, we showed him to watch it, and he was completely <laughs> silent throughout the movie. And we weren't sure if he was into it because it was dark. And just at one point, halfway through the movie, we just hear him go, just terrifying. In the most astute British <laughs> accent you've yeah. ever heard. It is. It was yeah. so Ooh, funny. There's this scene where Mama really wants a hug. 
And uh, the girl goes, don't hug her. She's mad. Who? I oh. screamed. I screamed. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's still, I've ever heard you scream. Yeah, it's scream. still terrifying. Yeah. Watch Mama if you haven't. It's a, Yo, it's a hidden gem. In that show, I was telling you to watch Eli Roth's History of Horror. Mm-hmm. They they show that scene. They talk about Mama? They talk, they talk about Mama briefly. They don't talk about Mama briefly. <laughs> she deserves better. Mama was terrifying. Yeah, yeah. absolutely terrifying. Just terrifying. terrifying. Dude, that experience in the UK... I don't remember how many times our bus broke down, but there's two things I remember about it. We were in Cardiff, and the bus we were in that broke down, we were going to spend the night in anyways or something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Do you remember that someone tried to light it on fire? Yeah. Yeah, a homeless man. Yeah, a homeless man tried to light it on fire. Why? Did he think that the driver tried to run over him or something? Which you absolutely know. He was sleeping in the street. Yeah, I think think, uh, where our bus was parked was where his uh, his usual sleeping spot was. was Well, he he attempted to light us on fire. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't end up happening, thank God. And then we ended up staying at a bar in, uh, who was nice enough to let us like store all of our mm-hmm. stuff from the trailer. We met up with As It Is there. Yeah, that's yeah, what it was. Yeah. And we stayed there forever until they had to close down. And we had we were kicked outside because they can't just let us live there. Yep. Yeah. And then it's just po- it starts to rain. So we're stuck outside in the rain. No food, no nothing. Everything's closed down around us until 4 or 5 in the morning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dude. We had these, uh, these uh, cases, like these uh, – uh, fabric cases for the amps and stuff, and we took them off so that we could use them as sleeping That's bags. Oh my God. We were just hiding in there next to this big stadium, just waiting for the bus to come. And that was the third or fourth time because we started in a van, went to a bus that yeah. looked like a, a weird Florida vacation yeah, it home. Like a con- it yeah. Like a- <laughs> oh yeah, it had like seashells. Yeah, it and did. Like- uh, I think we broke the record. I believe it was five. Yeah. Um, the company keeps changing its name. So yeah. if you're out there, out there, Cobra Tours, yeah. go fuck yourself. That's what, yeah. That was what they were originally called. But and yeah, they've, they've they, changed it so many times. And apparently, they're still fucking bands over. Yeah. Which yeah. sucks. Well, I mean, probably not now with Cobra. So if you're, if you're looking for a bus and it's a new company, mm-hmm. run. Yeah. The thing is... Well, there, just do your research. Yeah, do yeah. your research. There weren't a lot of us. And so uh, the only bus available was this like huge double-decker bus with like a bajillion bunks. So <laughs> yeah. each of us had a bunk on top and then a bunk to put all of our stuff storage in. storage bunk. Which was nice. And we brought the we uh, we asked the openers to come on the bus too. Yeah, and yeah. Then, we had like all this room. Yeah, mm-hmm. one of the the brawlers rode mm-hmm. on the last like week of the tour. Yep. We, we just brought them on the bus. Didn't yeah. charge them anything. Just was like, yo, just come hang mm-hmm. out. And then they did like a, and then that bus broke too, but not broke down. It's just the AC stopped working. Yeah. And then uh, there was like a upstairs. There was a big window. So yes, there's a big window. And a uh, sun would come in, so every single morning someone would have to wake up, take one of, from one of the extra bunks that nobody was sleeping in, take the mattress out, yeah. and then push it into the Dude, fucking glass. I have such a vivid memory of that window because um, Taylor Swift's new record had just come yeah. out, and I remember, yeah, yeah, I remember like looking up, and you are just headphones in, just looking out uh, on the road, and yeah. I was like, it that, was a that great record's got to be that. a vibe. Yeah, and then I took my headphones out, and we listened to it on my phone. Just it was yeah. so, I mean, we, just we out of the woods, did we out of the woods? Yeah, you single-handedly got everyone into that album. I know, dude. And it was like the first Taylor Swift album that I got into, mm-hmm. purely because, I don't know if you guys remember this, but uh, she, when Spotify was first taking off, she took all of her music yeah. off immediately. She was like, you're not paying your artists. Like, you yeah. fucked up. We're not, I'm not going to do it at all. So Spotify basically was like, we'll do anything to have Taylor Swift because she's like the biggest artist in the world. So the I don't remember exactly how they resolved it, but it was basically Spotify became the Taylor Swift app for a little bit to yeah. get her to come yeah. back. And it was like, it, no, you couldn't go anywhere without seeing it. And I just remember hearing the Shake It Off song, and I was like, that song sucks ass. Yeah, and, I hated it at first. And man. then... Uh, I just I uh, it was the only thing that you, I could download on my phone mm-hmm. right before we left for a flight, and I was like, "This is fucking amazing." Yeah, Songs re- you grow to like yeah. never stick at first. Yep. I feel Facts. like yeah, I feel like that they got a, a bad rep because of that song, and that I I don't know if it was a parody or not, or it's supposed to be like tongue in cheek. But there's so many like incredible pop hits and i guess it's because like the departure from country that was her first time really going full full pop full full yeah, yeah. um but god there's so many- welcome to new york oh yeah Baby, what's that for that was red but even red had like a little bit of influence yeah. here and dude, there red was red was a fire Ooh, though what's the one good. song i knew you were trouble when you yeah. walked in i did a cover of that on youtube dude, yeah. that song i remember there was a uh my parents owned a painting business growing up and mm-hmm. that song came on the radio yeah it's the first time i ever heard it. i was like this is so fucking good 
and one of the guys that was working with my parents like it's not real music and i was like dude shut the <laughs> fuck up it's on the yeah. radio it's like written by professional songwriters it's really fucking good. i was He's just like, it's not real music i was just talking about not this. real <laughs> it's <laughs> all fake <laughs> how uh there is there's this phenomenon where when something is too when an art is too accessible people hate it out of principle because yeah. it's so easily accepted yeah, yeah. But the ability to write, like you look at, at someone like Taylor Swift or an Ed Sheeran um, or a Maroon 5 or whoever it may be, these people that are considered like boring artists, uh -huh. the ability to make a song that is accepted almost universally, is there anything more powerful than that? that you can make a song the, that resonates with that many people? That's the goal at the end of the day. That's yeah. always been my goal personally in writing is like I always try to write through a lens of as if I'm listening to it and I'm trying to hate it. Yeah. Because that's usually what we accidentally do. Is like we hear a new song, we're like, fuck this. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's new. I don't know this. Who are you? It's like meeting a new person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no new friends. Dude. Yeah. yeah no, I've, I've met enough people. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. But it's, it, it, it's weird. You get less receptive as time goes on. Mm -hmm. But it really is like the more you listen to it, you really get to know if you like it or not. Yeah. I, I, I sometimes wonder if you can be tricked into liking a song that you wouldn't like otherwise or is that just if you like it you like it you know yeah. maybe some i mean i know that there's like certain um like certain types of melodies like are like just universe like people everyone likes the sound of it like yeah. there are certain things that are just more pleasing to the ear than others but it's always like i think you know, it's different for every person you know what that is for me is like an undeniable i love this song and now i don't know if i was hesitant or not at first probably not but that we mentioned it today dua lipa is levitating dude that chorus is so awesome it's just if you take away all the music, just that would that makes it. Yeah, <laughs> it. but it's it's one it's the first song that I've heard in a very long time that I went thirty years from now. It's still going to be played. The the the, oh, the way classic. that people listen to "I Want to Dance with Somebody" yeah. by Whitney Houston that's levitating. Yep. Like it will be here. For a long, long time. Do that's roller dope. rinks still exist? There's a reason I'm asking. Okay, what? <laughs> roller rinks. It's a roller rink song. It's a roller rink sure. song, 100. Yes. percent Yeah. Lights off, lasers, mm -hmm. and like and like a disco ball, and that song's playing. What what, what makes a roller rink song? Because I'm trying to think of a roller rink song. So uh, uh, disco you know, the, vibes. That that definitely <laughs> disco. But there's also that one song that goes. It's all around the world, just la 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 la. It's gotta be fast, I think. And there's also I'm Lou Dabadina. Huge roller rink song. Dude, there's that fucking TikTok with the guy. Sounds like you're singing. Dabadina, I would beat off a guy. Beat off a guy. When you were first singing, it sounded like you were doing it in a country voice. Like, I'm blue. Dabadina, I would think I did that. Dabadina, I would die. Hey, check it out. I'm blue. Hey, you know the popular country. Free phrase. Hey, hey, check it out. out. <laughs> uh, Two ninety nine. Uh, there was something I wanted to, to mention. We were talking about Taylor Swift, and you had mentioned that you did a. Uh, what, what was it? What? I just no. It's okay. a stupid thing that I said. Two ninety nine. It reminded me of when we would make that <laughs> the joke drum fill. About, yeah, we would joke about pulling it through a drive through, and they're like, "Sorry, uh, how much was it?" And he's like. <clears throat> $2.99. Full drum set in the little drive He's going drive snare, through. kick, kick, crash. Yeah. Crack, goo, goo, go. $2.99. Damn it, Carl. I told you to stop yeah. bringing your drum set to work. He set up a whole drum set in the drive through. <laughs> $2.99. Um, but we were, just, we were just talking earlier about Taylor Swift, and then you had, yeah, yeah. You had covered that song. Yeah. It is, it, it's wild because now, obviously, it's become a very common thing. It's very popular. But you were, like, one of the first people to really, like, delve into well, that cover world on on youtube or the internet at all that well the cover with that for sure but like taylor swift i got into when she was still a country artist because i'm awesome <laughs> uh because the girl i was dating at the time listened to country and i didn't and mm -hmm. i was like for s some stupid reason like against it i don't yeah. want to listen to country she's like no check this out this is actually like kind of poppy and she showed me her like acoustic album I was like this is amazing yeah and dude, i love country music oh it's yeah. dude i i slowly country. become more well, and more I, into I, it. I like even i like regular country well it's music, such I a think, different world like yeah. like why i if i i wrote <laughs> in nashville for some of these uh songs for the next record and their choruses have more words in it yeah, yeah. they listen to pop songs uh and their choruses like mm -hmm. like we just did bah. Ba, ba. If that was yeah. going to be like, I'm thinking about you and me and the yeah. thing. Because you have to tell a whole story. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I, that's my favorite yeah. part about it. It's like every country song is has a beginning, middle, end. It's yeah. Like, and it's detailed. It's, it's so, a movie. And yeah. it's so good. And like 
uh, it's a TikTok trend, but the I'm a survivor, the oh, relapse, yeah. the oh, relapse yeah. guitar thing. I listen to that song. It's so it's good. It feels like a- I went skydiving. I went rocking mountain climbing. I went 2.7 seconds. Oh, I'm a bull named Fu Manchu. Are you kidding that, me? So <laughs> incredible. Like it's it's about like ka, 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 ka. it's it's experiences that that basically everyone has had. And in, in in the meantime, they're like sprinkling in these very specific yeah. details about yeah. like what the dirt road yeah. felt like when you yeah. were driving in yeah. your car. Like well, because the song and credit the, the to the song. ones that don't do the tropes and get yeah. like yeah. like I went two point seven seconds on a bull named Fu Manchu. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's hilarious and unique. Well, it's yeah. just dope because that whole song is about like getting cancer yes. and like realizing that you only have this much time to live. You got to do live this like shit, you're dying. Man. Yeah, and dude, that's I have is, goosebumps talking I about me, this. Too. And then there's a key change, dude. And that song is. We're making a case if you don't like country for why you should give yeah. it a fucking yeah. shot again. I think I think there is definitely like a little bit of gatekeeping um, when it comes to country music in that. Oh yeah, there I are, think it's oh, yeah. any genre. Really. Yeah. yeah, but there are people that are that are considered like fake country. Like for example, oh, yeah. uh, Taylor Swift for a little bit. Uh, Sam Hunt is another huge one. Where oh, do they hate on Sam Hunt? If you mix too much pop into your country, uh, Rascal Flatts are another example where like. They're like, well, that's fake country, and I'm only here for this very specific time. Exactly, they're moving the genre along because once your genre stops moving, it dies. Yeah. Um, and you notice that, like, you'll see that with with rock a lot, where like, it's it. I think of all the genres, it's one that has died and come back to life more than anything. But you'll see a genre, for example, grunge came in and it was this hot new thing that was the counterculture to 80s hair metal because 80s hair metal had gotten so overproduced and ridiculous. Grunge came along, and then grunge dissipated into like this. Creed, basically, yeah. this like very watered down alt rock, and then it keeps coming back yep. and it keeps changing. Guitars, but if you don't, you die. Pop punk so. is back right now. Yeah, it's so crazy to see the cycle. Like two thousand and eight was like Kesha at four on the floor, Lady Gaga. Yep, not a fucking organic instrument for miles. Yep, <laughs> yeah. and it's taken this long. I know. For it to hear inst- like real instruments, is it like every twelve years or something? That it, it feels like it, man. Mm-hmm. I think there is a statistic that like yeah. Yeah. it's like there everything is in a cycle we, of twelve years. I wonder if there's like, like clothing and the secret it, society yeah. like that's upstairs, like in their mantle, just like it's almost time, yeah. make the shift. They're yeah. like, <laughs> what do you desire? Bring back bucket hats. <laughs> It is time. Yeah, yeah. It's like a, it's like a, a machine. It's like the South Park with the manatees with the balls. Yeah. Like, <laughs> they're like, today it will be Jinko jeans. Yeah. <laughs> we need to see more of the bright colors. That's wild. Oh, uh, we I didn't know. do questions this time. Oh wait. Uh, oh. I wanted to touch on something that you mentioned. Yes. About how they're how it's progressing, right? Yeah. I saw the saddest but coolest thing last night. Have you guys watched the movies that made us? No. Oh, Netflix. I have watched that. Did you watch the Jurassic Park one? No, it's just I, I actually had to stop watching it because the, it's the same fucking thing every single time. Like, yeah. They're going to make this movie. They can't make the movie. They definitely can't make well, that's the not movie. Exciting to they see the made struggles the they movie. Face. Dude, every time. The Jurassic Park one I can't recommend enough because I didn't realize how historic it was. Yeah. Because up until that movie, they were relying on stop motion for yeah. the primary of all of their like generated effects yeah. and like they, in like Star Wars the AT-ATs yeah. that's what they're called right yeah, yeah. Well, um, they that was stop motion there was this guy who was like the guy mm-hmm. he dedicated his life to, to being the best stop motion yeah. guy ever so he was doing all that and then he was doing stop motion in the beginning stages of Jurassic Park and Steven Spielberg was like this doesn't look realistic enough mm-hmm. and there was these guys that were doing like computer generated stuff yeah. yeah and it was what was it 1992 i think they worked for lucas films at the time too. yeah uh i'm not sure i i think they had like their own thing they know mm-hmm. they 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 did do a lot of work with lucas films but i don't mm-hmm. know if they were like and it doesn't matter um anyways so he they 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 were like he wanted to do this he wanted to cr- just take a shot at making a computer generated t-rex and his boss was like don't you're you're committing suicide, is what he said. Yeah. Because he's gonna step on this guy's toes, who was like a god in this industry. And he goes, "I'm gonna do it." <laughs> he didn't say it to him. He did yeah. it in secret. And then because of this, he they he knew they had they had a meeting coming up with like this head honcho producer, and he had it on his screen when they walked in, just so they would be like, "What's that?" Which they did, yeah. and they said that was amazing. Eventually, he built a walking cycle for this T Rex, and Steven Spielberg saw it. Apparently, George Lucas cried because they were all watching it together. And they were like blown away, like, oh my God, this makes the movie. And then when you go back and watch it, the close ups are all robotics. Yeah. yeah. And the faraways are all computer generated. But the reason why I'm bringing this story up 
is they pan back to the stop motion guy. Oh, and he's and like, you can't do this yeah, to me. I started this company. He looked so defeated. Even today, he was yeah. just like, I couldn't see past my own ego. But that was what was happening, is he was that old school way of thinking, and they were just being like, we're going to go mm -hmm. do this. And look at today. It's like CGI rules the movie yeah. industry. This mm -hmm. is something, I mean, and, and we've been talking about this a lot um, for this new set it off record. Obviously, we can't say too much because everything in the music industry is shrouded in mystery. But yeah. <laughs> the idea of like, it is so easy to get caught up in the formula of what every other band is doing. Of yeah. Being like, well, this is just how it's done. It worked for this person, so it's going to work for us. But every artist that has ever really broken out and done something different and made a name for themselves, not necessarily went against the grain, but just did what they thought was best for them. Yeah. And well, maybe yeah, that goes against the what everyone else is doing, but that's the kind of stuff that makes you stand out. And that's the stuff that pushes the genre forward. And evolve. It's inspirational. Every yeah. single time you have to involve when you're putting out new stuff because mm -hmm. if you don't, you're just you're you're, you're going to have you're not going to reach anybody new. It's yeah. all just yeah. going to stay the same. I got to get Loki more water. Please well, continue with that. Yeah. He's got more water. Um uh, this is our chance. <laughs> this is our chance. Um <laughs> so, the thing we're planning <laughs> Oh, you watched the videos of Mystic Manor. Oh, man. All right. So uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, we've talked about this before. Zach is really big into uh, theme amusement park. parks, theme parks. Um, and but mostly Universal Studios or Disney. Yes. Like, don't come for me for Six Flags info. I don't know shit. Right. But I found out that um, – because Haunted Mansion is my favorite ride. Um, it has been since I was a kid. And I found out that they do things a little bit differently it, uh, at Disney Shanghai. Mm -hmm. And they have something called the Mystic Manor, which is basically – uh, the story is this explorer who's collected all of these things from around the world, and his pet monkey ends up opening this magic box that brings everything to life. Yeah. And I have, if if you get a chance to watch it on YouTube, there's a there's a, tr a track ride through, and it looked realer than real. It was the first yeah. time I've ever seen a ride that I, even from watching on YouTube, I was like, I'm I'm here. Yeah. I'm immersed. It's all happening. It looks like the the moving portraits are following you. It's completely trackless. I yeah. was I was my mind was blown. It was insane. It's incredibly. It's like the technology involved is insane. It's like way state of the art. It's actually I think a couple of years old now. Mm -hmm. But like it's only two years old. A couple of years. I don't know. Exactly. So is it using the same technology that Rise of the Resistance uses? It's like yeah. magnets. Uh, <laughs> Do you like magnets? Bro? Like you just it's go like, on the ride and it's yeah. like a guy like. That's yeah. all you know. Sorry, about man. It. I just got done with a yeah. run. You know, you know. <laughs> dude, imagine being on Rise of the Resistance. You know how crazy that ride yeah. is. You're on it, and then you look to the person next to you when you get off. Like, pretty cool, right? You know how they do it. Madness. <laughs> like, do what? Do what part of this? The whole thing. It's, it's just all, all magnets. magnets, dude. It's but... not impressive. It's just yeah. magnets. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, so there's like uh, it's trackless, like Rise of the Resistance. Like it, there is no track. You're not. Following. But it's magnets, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's trackless. Yeah. yeah. So it's trackless. Um, but it's uh, it's they have like the walls disappear at one point, and you're like in a galaxy, and like they do all this crazy shit with projection mapping. And I don't really know exactly how all that works. I just know that it's fucking hard to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it takes a lot of very smart people to like, and it takes so much math because they have to like figure out angles and like how, where it's going to, the timing of everything. It's, it's fucking insane. But the, the, the their uh, Shanghai Disney also has the insane parts of the Caribbean too. It's like, uh, uh, nothing at all compared to the pirates of the Caribbean that we have here in the States. It's like, uh, the only thing that's the same is that you're in a boat, but everything mm -hmm. else is so. Is there different. Disney overall fairly new? Uh, yeah. Really? Don't they also have the Tron Shanghai, coaster. I think Shanghai's is uh was opened in like 2010. I can't mm -hmm. wait for theme parks, man. I mean, I I'm gonna go to the ones in Orlando again, mm -hmm. and I cannot wait. Really, really excited for that. Halloween Horror Nights is talking about everything they're gonna be doing. They're doing the icons again. Um. There's something to be said for, and it, it happens at Universal and Disney. I mean, their big thing is immersion, right? But the the fact that they have these sound studios and they're able to create these haunted houses has always been so inspiring to mm. us in that, like, you feel like you're taken to another world. Oh, absolutely. And that's something we've literally been like, all right, how can we do that for set it off shows? I know. Yeah. Do that for Dude, literally for the next uh, touring cycle, we've talked about you know, implementing that somewhat. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know how we would do it, but yeah, it's going to take some planning. Yeah. But basically like setting up like a full tent in the venue that people can walk in and like, ex and then like have an experience. It's yeah. Like, the theme is going to be winter and we're going to turn the AC to 40 degrees yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and we're going to throw ice at you. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that actually, it's funny you mentioned that there was a, uh, there's a new wrestling company called AEW and they had this big debut for this um, legendary wrestler named Sting it was a surprise. Wait, Sting. Yeah. But they, Hell yeah. so they, the, the episode, uh, they kept saying winter is coming. 
And we're like, all right, interesting, interesting. Jon Snow. I, that's what I thought. I was like, this is a <laughs> yeah, weird Game yeah. of Thrones thing. And then all of a sudden, so they're at this place, they're at Dally's place, um, and it's this outdoor venue, and it's in Florida, and it starts snowing. Like actual snow starts outdoors? coming down outdoors. How do they do this? I think it was just like some sort of machine or yeah. whatever. And then he appeared, and I was like, you can literally just do anything if you I have enough it. money. Like you yeah. enough for like if you're creative enough, you can make anything into anything. You made it snow in Florida. This is amazing. And it's circling back to like the not following the formula thing. Like that's what's exciting about moving forward is now we can just – I'm sick of formulas. We're going to try to do whatever we want because we always have and we haven't always fully leaned into it. We're going to and it's awesome. I think it's a lot of – we've tried so hard to to be what we think other people want us to be. And then we sat – especially during this pandemic being able to sit there and be like, who are we – what is set it off yeah. without any other outside influence? What do we like? What do we want to be? It's so easy to get caught up in that when you want to be successful and with how oversaturated everything is. So like that, the fact that we're like finally letting go of that just feels so feels satisfying. Good. Feels good. Yeah, I'm excited. Dude, I'm ready for this holiday season. Like, I can't... Halloween or Christmas? Oh, Halloween. Halloween. Yeah. Yeah, like it's August, and I know that, but I want it to not. It's be. time. It's it creeps up sooner and sooner. Um, I'm noticing because everyone has kind of accepted. Halloween's a really big deal. I don't know if it's as big a deal uh, um, outside of the United States, but the second that the summer is over, people are just now being like, "It's Halloween for the rest of these three yep. months or whatever it is." So it's exciting. I'm I'm all I'm here for it. Did you guys have like fun trick or treating experiences as a kid? Yeah, I loved it. Did uh, you? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Are you not a Halloween guy? Uh, what about I mean, when you were a kid? Sure. You're not a big. But you gotta. Exp- I need to know what about the apathy here. Did I don't you- how. To, I've just never been a big fan. I don't like even when you were younger. No, I don't. I mean, I, of course, I did the trick or treating and like went out, but I don't have like a. Mem- I didn't like meet Superman or anything. Like, I didn't, <laughs> neither did I. Yeah, I it's not like <laughs> is I, that supposed to happen? I don't know. I don't know. Like, I, I didn't. I don't have anything that stands out as like I can't believe that happened. Like, I walked uh, up to well, doors and they gave me candy, <laughs> and then I went home and I did the thing where you trade your, your siblings for the candy. You're such the grounding member. Yeah. Of this no. band. <laughs> you really are. Oh, I, I, I just don't get. I just like. I don't. I've never been like super into it. Past like the age of like. 13. I guess. I mean, like, like, was there a costume you, that you were so excited to wear? Once was there a stopped, house that you thought was like haunted that you would still go up to with your friends? Was there like a house that went all out that scared the shit out of you? Is there anything like that? No. Not really. No. Mm. Well, I mean, I, I maybe that. Did you I, decorate your your house when you were a kid? No. No, mm. I wonder if that's why. Because I, I used to get super into doing that with my sister. My mom did. Yeah. My mom got super into it. She would do like the whole trick, trick or treat. She had this. She had cool ideas about how she would put like a dental floss hanging from the. Roof oh, to feel like spider by, webs. By that's spider awesome. Webs and stuff. Yeah, like so she did stuff like that. She yeah, would yeah. do like uh, she do like rice krispie treats under the ground, so it feels like you're. I mean, uh, rice krispies under the ground, so you feel like you're stepping on bugs Holy and shit. shit. I don't know. She was like big into it and they would make like puppets, but I've just never at, that's past the, like next level. I past the age of, of like 12. I was just like, I don't, it's not for me. Dude, I used to go like me and my sister would decorate every year and we, you know, the, the fun part was getting the ladder out, getting the boxes out of the attic and then like just opening like, Oh yeah, this thing. Yeah. And then we'd go outside and spend the whole afternoon, the evening decorating it. And we wanted ours to be so scary to where like kids were like a little nervous to come yeah, to the front yeah. door. So we had like these speakers that was like a little like a CD player. Remember my old living room? Those speakers we had tall speakers there, and we would just turn it out of the window and open it. And we just found this like CD of like old, <laughs> like just spooky sound effects, yeah. and we'd blast it. That remember that remind, the spooky sound effects reminds me of that time that band on tour. Uh, that you go on their bandwagon and they fucking had spooky music yeah, playing. Yeah, like that's just how they lived their life. How they unwinded. Yeah, they, they had, were listening to. Now were, that's what I call Halloween. Dude, they were so three. they were so committed to their spooky uh, bits that they would their their spooky image that they yeah. did it in their bandwagon, like like in their home and like yeah. the cobwebs all over there. Like yeah. it's hard to get into your cabinet, yeah. man. It's fucking cop. Like clean this shit up. You're not 16. But yeah, I, I th- so funny. I think it's a, a lot because it's the same thing for um, like the December season as well. As I like the idea that like everything changes. Like everyone accepts like, hey, this is happening, and for a while, th- everywhere you go feels different. It's exciting and new, and then you get to be whoever you want to be. Yeah. You get to dress up and 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 have fun, and also like we're mm. we're big horror movie fans, so yeah. it feels like everything is around that. There's all these cool events to go to. I don't know. I've it always just, loved it. It brings me a lot of joy. I also like I don't know uh, like if you got if you look at what I've been for Halloween for like the past like six years it's always just been like last minute I make it up that yeah. day but, like one like one like twenty sixteen I think twenty seventeen I literally just wrote 
uh, book on my face. I mean, oh, Facebook gym. Facebook, Facebook gym. Yeah. And then I think another year I did three hole punch gym. Like, yeah. I don't care. You're the gym helper of yeah. Halloween. Yeah. I don't mean to do it like him because I am Jim from the office. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I am Jim. If, if I was anybody, I'd be Dwight and it sucks. Uh, <laughs> I'm definitely Michael Scott, and I hate it. Oh, you're so <laughs> Michael Scott. I never even thought about it. Wow. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. I know you're I am. Later God. season, Michael I, Scott. I, later. Yeah, yeah. later. You're, not, you're not one or two. No, 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 sure. no, no. no. Yeah. I want everyone to like me terribly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah you're yeah. – uh, what's the, the the last season he was on? Uh, what? The one where he gives uh, he gives uh, uh, Oscar that doll. Oh, yeah. He's like, oh. <laughs> he just accepted yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, by far the littlest <laughs> amount of respect for me is so far. I think you're uh, closest to Jim on it. Oh, uh, I do. Uh, must be nice. I do look at you, the camera. You do that, and you look at the camera, and you got the wisecracks. Yeah, yeah. I'm also, I'm definitely Dwight because I like get obsessed with knowing the knowledge of way, <laughs> too, of like way too in depth on things. I it's could like, see you oh. having a beat farm. Yeah, but I would point. hate it. I yeah. would hate yeah, having a beat yeah. farm. But I, I would like to live and have some land. I'd be nice. <laughs> Sometimes me and my brother talk about getting twelve acres of land. <laughs> the most. Dwight thing you've ever said. I know. I look forward to owning some land. Be fortuitous to have some (laughs) land. Out of all of them, I am definitely closest to Dwight. Mixed with Andy a little bit because I have like singing personality Mm. and I'll I'll make a song out of anything and make a joke. I think I would mix a bit of myself with Andy as well. Yeah, I love Andy. He's like so good. I wish season three Andy stuck around for longer. Angry Andy. I thought he was eventually going to snap and come back, Mm -hmm. but he never really did, did he? Wasn't he? I think he was only supposed to be on the show for a little bit and they loved him so much they kept him on there. He had the best blooper of any blooper I've seen. What was it? It was they were playing Call of Duty at work. Oh, yeah. And, and Andy Bernard is taking it so seriously, and Jim Halpert is not that good at it. And so it's the um, the boss, Andy Bernard and Jim, all on they, – they have a sidebar. And they're like, we're in Carrington, which is a popular map from like Call of Duty 2, I think. And um, he goes, what are you using? He goes, I don't know, a sniper. And Jim says sniper. And he goes, what? You using a sniper? Oh man, I'm the game is over. I'm gonna shoot you for real. Yeah, yeah. And then they all just lose it. And yeah. It's the funniest thing oh, ever. Because you can so tell he just yeah. made that up on the spot. Yeah. Yep. Did I tell you I was blown away? I was watching because I went through this period where I would watch season three and two just on repeat all yeah. the time. And I would watch the um, the commentary episodes. Yeah. Well, you had uh, you had this this book of CDs. Yeah, the DVD that we would set. bring on tour. And this has been since I joined the band. So what, 2010? Yeah. I think I and threw it, was it away. The Office Season 2, Tropic Thunder, yeah. a really scratched version of Terminator 2. So yeah. I'm not surprised that you watched <laughs> we, it so It might many be times. in the storage unit, but yeah, dude, I, I abused that season. Yeah. But I remember watching it and then... And, and, um, there was the they were when Andy was talking about being in an uh, acapella group. Yeah, and like you were, they were like Andy, you or what his real name is? Wow, what's his real name? Ed Helms. Ed Helms. Like Ed, you were actually in an acapella group in college, weren't you? And I'm currently going to Oberlin Music Conservatory, mm-hmm. and he goes, Yeah, I was in the Oberlin Obertones, and I my eyes went what? Yeah, and yeah. I looked it up, and he went to the same college I went to, and they did an interview with him. Yeah. And he talked about all the spots that are like so close to me that he used to go to. And I thought that was the coolest yeah. thing. Wow. The same college that you dropped out of. I he he graduated. Of. Did he actually graduate? Yeah, but you dropped out. So. Okay, yeah, I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, for, I forget that you went to college. Me yeah. too. Yeah. I, I keep remembering Dude, that like... that one story you have about college that's so fucking funny about how you went from having like really professional, like really strict... Uh, conductors, and then you went into the college <laughs> conductor, and she was just like, like arm yeah, on, <laughs> on her whole. She was like, I imagined like she was wearing like a drapes and like gowns, like a full hippie. She and being, like, spoke like this. <laughs> Every word was over enunciated. Here we go, <laughs> flinging my arms. Then, Fine, beat one. I dare you. <laughs> <laughs> and then your your but your teacher was like, let's go. Let's oh yeah, it was go, used to like marching go. band. Marching band is bump bump. Bump, bump, bump. You know exactly what beat yeah, you're on. Yeah, yeah. And then, then it, when it's, to be fair, when it's classical, you're a little bit more free form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, it was, <laughs> if I, I, I asked one of my, 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 uh, my, not my students, one of my peers, I was like, hey, um, are you having trouble at all? I was like, you basically just have to know the song like really well. Oh, <laughs> hey, uh, quick, uh, the fuck? Like, <laughs> yeah, no, for again. sure. Yes, Cody. Yeah, the fuck? <laughs> I have no idea where we are. Yeah. But yeah. to be fair, it, maybe it's something like a new style that I had to get used to because they were all they were all used to it and they were fine. Right. But I was like, what? Because the you know what it is, and if anyone plays an instrument or has read music back at home, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There is this anxiety that ensues when you have a multi bar rest because so like you'll play like then you then you put your instrument down and then you see one measure with mm-hmm. a big dark line left to right and the number like 42 on it, which is 42 measures of rest. <laughs> so you're like one two. 
three, what was it? Five. Oh, yeah. Uh, what number? <laughs> what number? What number are we on? What number are we on? And then you're like, hope I know where I come in. Yeah, if you it's miss one scary. beat, you miss one beat, you miss count how many measures you're resting. It's yeah. the scary. That thing. that's anxiety. It's silence, uh, but it's slowly getting <laughs> faster. You're like. Jesus. Dude, that was my biggest because wow. I would often get distracted, yeah. lose my count, or be un- like, you know, when like you know someone's name, yes, but your brain goes, "Are you sure?" Yep, it's like that, dude. I have so I have something similar. To, so I'll zone out all the time during set it off shows just because we played the song so many times. <laughs> it's boring. Well, no, it, I, I have a blast. It's, <laughs> know, it's muscle memory. You know, you don't yeah. have to like think about it. So I'll be like, like, "All right, what am I gonna get for dinner after the show? I hope things are open. You know, whatever." Yeah, yeah. Looking at the crowd, being like, "That person looks like they're having fun. What is that person throwing up? I don't know." Yeah. And so. I'll get through it, and there's obviously things repeating in songs, so you'll get to a chorus, right? And I'll be playing a chorus, and then I'll, I'll snap back in and go, yeah. is it the bridge? Yes, it's always is the bridge. Is it the verse? You know what What's song next? specifically it happens with is the song Duality. Dude, that is oh, the longest, longest song. song. It is a 12-minute song. <laughs> Every time we play it, I'm like, gum, gum, gum. Like, dude, this is like the 80th fucking verse we've done. It's like I, I literally, because we used to do it for uh, VIP sound check. Yeah, we would, yeah. We would bring uh, fans in for VIP, and they would mm-hmm. watch us do a sound check. And dude, by by the time the bridge came, I was like, we have been playing this song for like. <laughs> <That's 18 laughs> I've like grown a beard. I'm like, this is ridiculous. It's oh my god! So long. And the chorus is is like, um, it's like, but it's the it's 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 uh it's double the length each time. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, God damn. Dude. Yeah. And it starts with a chorus, then a verse. Then That's a what chorus, it is. Then yeah. a second That's verse. why it's so easy to forget is because it's a full chorus, right? Yeah. 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 And then it goes verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, bridge chorus. chorus. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, which fucking chorus is this? <laughs> I know, dude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. There's nothing more terrifying. There's, there's been a couple times and uh, pro tip for anyone who, who, who is playing music live or just starting out. If you, Act like you didn't mess up nine times out of ten. As long as you can get back on quickly, people won't notice. Oh yeah. But there's a couple times I'll just come. <laughs> there was this, <laughs> it was a fill that I blew so hard, just wrecked it. And every single time, anytime that happens, Zach just turns and gives me a little look, like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, that's what we used to do that all the time. Anytime yeah. you fuck up on stage and you look to see everybody else, yep. everybody's always doing holding up a one because it means first day. Yeah. Oh yeah, like, oh, first, day oh, here? first day. Is this your first day here? <laughs> You know the song we've played seven million There's times. There's been so many times where I've like act, like forgotten a word or something, and I I look over to like one of you, and I just get the smile. Yeah. I'm and like, mm, yeah, first day. <laughs> first day. Oh my god. Yeah. How I, I feel like the the I wonder how often singers do that where they'll forget and they'll just hold out the mic because like they're gonna. Oh, know that's it, right? the cheat. That's the cheat code. Get out of jail free card. Yeah. I forgot a lyric, but you know it. So you look at their mouth like I'm back. There's so many songs in our cat in our catalog to remember all of them is like. Like if I had to sing all of them back to back to back, it would be like the equivalent of doing a full ass musical. Yeah, yeah, it'd be like reading an like reciting an entire book. Yeah, and it, yeah, that's what it would feel like. Yeah, it's, like, it's even longer than a musical. Where are we at? We're at fifty five minutes. Let's end yeah. it. Fifty five. Let's end this fucking podcast. Zach's ready to get out of here. Yeah, I gotta hit. I gotta do Zach's fitness corner. Still. I gotta get moving. I haven't even. I haven't closed my. I haven't closed my circles. My rings. You haven't closed your rings. Yeah. Hey, How much further you gotta go? Uh, a good amount actually. <laughs> this is so interesting. Yeah, uh, quality content. Forty-eight minutes of workout. Oh, dude, you're I need, good. Are you I need kidding? twelve more minutes. I got. Right. I got about another four. Do you do, did you set your goal to an hour of working out every day? Yeah. I, I forgot to change that. I, I do an it. hour and I do a thowie cowie. Thowie cowie cowie. I hit a thowie cowie. Uh, you hit thowie cow every day. Every I try, day. I, I try day to hit a thowie, thowie cowie. cowie. And, Isn't uh, that technically a pound? I heard that was a like around a pound. Mm, no, if no, you no. Li- a pound if is consist- thirty five hundred calories. So well, if you mind. consistently are eating five hundred uh, calories, if less. you're under a thousand, you'll lose a two- pound or two. Here it week. is. Here it is. This is how you. Here do it. it is. So, so a pound for any reason. No. <laughs> do anything. <laughs> no matter what. Uh, so thirty five hundred calories <laughs> is a pound is is basically around a, the equivalent of a pound of fat. Okay. So if you were to do a diet. And take out 500 calories, eat 500 calories less a week, uh, well, less a day, and you did that for a week, seven days, that's 3,500. Yeah. So technically, you should be losing a pound, a, you should be losing a pound a week. I yeah. do it where I burn a thawie. Burn thawie cowie. Thawie cowie. Burn a yeah. thawie cowie. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so that way, I'm burning close to, close to 1,000 calories every single day. Which then factors to be about two pounds a week. Same. It's incredibly slow. You lose weight so slowly, but 
it's the most sustainable and you're not doing a crash That's what diet. I care about is sustaining. Yeah. So when is I did... Is this all going to be in the podcast? Oh, I, I mean, don't know. I said we could end it. But. I mean, it's, 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 it's honestly quality information. I kind of like it. Yeah. Thawi yeah. Cowie. So, Thawi Cowie. So I do my Thawi Cowie. And <laughs> <laughs> so I lose about two to three pounds a week, which is a little fast. Like, yeah. But it's crazy because if you do like a crash diet uh, and, um, and if somebody's doing like uh, what's Atkins called now? Paleo or no, 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 no. Atkins, no, Atkins is, is still, called. There's still, it's still different than keto. No, but a- a keto. Yeah. So it's not though. It's it the is. Same thing. It's Wait, the same Atkins thing. is about high fat content. Yeah, high fat content, no carbs. I okay, then it's the same fucking. It's thing. It's exactly the same thing. They just that. rebranded it because the owner, the creator died. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, and he died from doing Atkins. So uh, <laughs> so uh, uh, the. Uh, keto is ba- to me. I don't know. I'm not saying if you're doing keto and it's working for you. I've done it, so I can talk about it. That's that's dope. I, yeah. I mean, I hope it works out. I, I just, know. I know. I'm I, not doing it. I've done I it. view it as a crash diet. It is. And 100%. It's a crash diet. And I lost so, weight crazy fast. Yeah. So I can't do that because uh, so, uh, as soon as I get off of the momentum of that diet, I'll ruin it. That's what happened. I. Yeah. It was a year ago. I was on, I would, a year ago. I was on keto today, basically. And I did it all the way up until I went to um, see some friends in September for a draft. Excuse me, fantasy football draft. And um, there was beers and stuff, so I went off my diet. I was like, I'll just get back on later. Too late. Yep. You gain it all back and then some. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you if you do a crash mm-hmm. diet and you lose that much weight. Yeah. And it can mess with your metabolism, yep. so then it's harder yeah. to lose weight later. It's a whole thing. Yeah. So that's why I like doing the Thawi Cowie. Yeah, yeah, it's just all about not overeating and exercising and eating good stuff. Yeah. The more you know. Yeah. Well, let's play. Bum. What? Bum. Are you going to start, bum, are you gonna start bum, doing a song on gonna, the outro? No, I was going to end it. Are we doing the outro? The outro's playing right now. Yeah, dude, we're moving I to I forgot it. we don't have headphones. Yeah, I know. It's insane. Thank you, everybody, so much for tuning in again. We will see you very soon. This is Cody. Max. Zach. And this is the Talk It Off Podcast. podcast. I wanted to do it with you. I wanted to do it with you. You get the fun one.